you had mentioned uh, Tupac. Yes, sir. In the past. Um, how'd you meet Tupac? Basically, uh, uh, let's see, how did I meet Pac? I think through shocking him, you know what I mean? Through Dizzle Underground. Definitely like the, the formal introduction. Definitely for Dizzle Underground, I think. Um, this was before Pac blew up, I take it. Hell no, I wasn't part of DU or none of that. Um, my cousin and them, my cousin the Gov, he, he was dealing with Pac and shit, you know what I mean, during that era. I was a young kid, so. Um, we was more of a Dizzle Underground type of people, you know what I mean? So let's go back, let's rewind to me and them school going to Westlake Junior High School. Westlake Junior High School by Lake Merritt. Money B lived two blocks from the high school. So Money B would drive up and down the street and his drop top uh, Mustang and shit. So we, we fucking, you know, Dizzle Underground out. And then one of their cousins or nephews went to our school. So Money B would be picking them up and shit. So, we was more tapping into Digital Underground. So when the Five on the thing happened and um, Digital Underground got on the um, remix, that be began our real relationship, like industry relationship with Digital Underground. So Pac was locked up while we doing this. You know what I mean? While the Five on the remix was done, Pac was locked up. So we didn't really get able to fuck with him. You know what I mean? Period. But when he got out of jail, we added a song for one of the soundtracks. Um, and uh, we was doing a video for it. It was a song for Shock G and them. And we went to the video shoot in LA and Pac showed up. So that gave us a formal introduction to Pac at that video shoot. Oh, okay. Which was in 96. 96. So oh, you didn't meet Pac till, oh wait. 96, uh, yeah. You didn't meet him till 96. Uh-huh. Because he got out in October, 95. Like, I, like around October. So, yeah, right, right after that, like literally, right after that. Like, I want to say January or something, we met him, you know. Okay. Were you guys going to do any music or anything together, or? Um, music did get done, you know what I mean? Um, Pac, you know, he was listening to the Loonies and uh, Drew Down, you know what I mean, period. So he, he had an admiration for us. So he was doing a, um, the All Lives On Me, you know, um, and uh, Drew Down, I guess was at the same hotel Pac was staying at. You know what I mean? And um, yeah, they uh, Big Sykes seen him in the lobby, like, Pac upstairs, nigga wanna holler at you. So uh, that's when, um, that's the, the, allegedly the, uh, the night when um, uh, Faith came over to the room and Drew Down was in the room when she came up. And yeah, <laughs> Pac was like, nigga, watch who, who I got. Or some shit like that, you ain't gonna believe who coming. He said, answer the door. So Drew answered the door, and it was Faith. You know what I mean? Allegedly, <laughs> <laughs> this is the story Drew now tell. So it was Faith and Pac, like, yeah, now I got this. And Drew had to bounce. But the next day, he tell Drew to come to the studio. And he on the, um, the intro of uh, Wonder Why You Call You Bitch. One of those. Uh, no, 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 no. Is it, uh, he on the intro of one of those. I, I want to think, uh, every same hoes, he on the intro to outro. Oh, he's on the outro, is it a... Uh... The outro or the intro of one of them motherfuckers, man. I think it's all about you. I thought I was about to say, I think it is all, yeah. I think it's all about yeah, you. it's all about, yeah. He on the intro, all about you, so. Uh, yeah, Drew went to the studio the next day and um, did all about you. And uh, yeah, that's how um, Drew Down got on the motherfucker. And um, after that, um, Pac started working on Machiavelli, and at the same time he's working on Machiavelli, he's working on the album called One Nation. So that's when he had um, everybody from the East Coast, you know what I mean, the Midwest, down South, and the West Coast all on one album. So he's dealing with the Goody Mob, he's dealing with Smith and Wesson, you know what I mean, Eric B, you know what I mean, Greg Nice, you know what I mean, just dealing with a lot of people, you know what I mean, a lot of people on the West Coast and shit. So um, yeah, he wanted us to get on the album. So Numb does a studio session and get on the album. I'm locked up at this time. The Drew Down does a session and get on the album. I never get on the album because I'm locked up. So it never happened with me. But the one time I was in a Can-Am studio with Pac trying to record, I got, I just, um, I got rubbed the wrong way by Pac. <laughs> okay. Everybody know the story when I was like, uh, and I get it because now that I'm the dude that people ask, what are we at? I get what he was saying. So 
Um, I asked Pac, we was at K&M Studios, and Pac and them had the front studio, Snoop and them had the back studio. So um, I'm in Pac and them studio. Now while I'm trying to go in Pac and them studio, and Pac is coming out the studio. I'm like, Pac, where the weed at? He's like, nigga, I ain't the weed, nigga, I don't sell weed. And he spin off and just keep, like, he was just on his way somewhere. I ain't the weed, nigga, I don't sell weed. And just, I just dip. I was like, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> and I get it, because I don't sell weed, nigga. I'm Tupac. I get it. But at that time, little nigga, hyphy, like, nigga, what the nigga just say to me, nigga? Fuck this session, man. So I left his session and went to the back and snooping them session. They just had weed on the table everywhere. Like, nigga, roll up. Roll up, roll up. And it was that type of vibe with Snoop shit. Pop was, ain't the weed, nigga. Like, I was like, all right, my nigga. So. That was um, yeah, a night at Can-Am that I was kind of heated at Pac. And it was a misunderstanding me taking it too personal. Like, I I tell niggas I ain't the weed, man. To this day, I'm like, I ain't the weed, man. I can't sell you nothing, but here you go. Roll something up. You know what I mean? So I took it. You know what I mean? The, yeah, I went overboard with what I was taking. I got too personal. And to somebody that you like, this Pac, and the nigga Pac come out, iced out, he, you know what I mean? Nigga, I ain't the weed, nigga. <laughs> you crush your, all your, you know what I mean? All your shit about Pac just crush you, like, ah, fuck that nigga. <laughs> and, and Gemini's, you know what I mean? I deal with a few, my mom was a Gemini, so you gotta catch them on their good days, you know what I mean? When they're them. And then a Gemini could be somebody totally different, so I think. I caught him on one of them days when he was totally different, but I understand what he was getting at, but he didn't have to yell. <laughs> he had to yell it, I ain't the motherfucker. You know what I mean? He could just be like, yo, man, I don't sell weed, but my niggas in there rolling up, man. Go go try to find something. He could have been like that. He yelled at a nigga, like, I don't know what he was going through, but yeah. <laughs>